May we pray, please. Dear Lord, I come today as humble as I know how with praises of thanksgiving. Thank you for waking us up this morning and allowing us to be here to praise your holy name. Thank you for your continuous blessings that rain down on us each and every day. Because I know, Lord, no matter how we try, we can't beat your giving. So, Father, I come today asking your blessings on each and every one of us here today. Help us to be strong and to do your holy will. I ask this in your son Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Good evening, good... <laughs> good morning, good morning, good morning. Good morning! It's not about us, but it's about him. And wow, what an awesome guy we serve. So wonderful, so powerful, and oh, so marvelous. Now, I would like to thank you for inviting me here today. And again, my name is Samuel Green, and I would like to thank you for inviting me here today. I am excited about being here today because I am ready to share God's words with you. I know you could have chosen many, but you chose me. And once again, I thank you. Now I've talked about a lot of mighty men in the Bible. I've talked about Abraham, Job, Daniel. I even talked about a man who loved God with all his heart, but still wanted to disobey. Yep, old Jonah. And a kid that God gave the insight to deliver his words, Samuel. And a boy that nobody knew would be able to bring down a giant, David. The shepherd boy, the warrior, the musician, and the king. Yes, there are a lot of money men in the Bible. But today I want to talk to you about one of God's game changers. It's so funny because I've been wanting to tell this story for a long time. Matter of fact, I wanted to tell this story since I was six years old. But today, my message is not about one of the mighty or faithful men in the Bible. It's about a queen. My message today is Queen Esther, the game changer. Now, there are three reasons why I call her a game changer. Number one, she was a woman. Number two, she was a Jew. Number three, she saved your people. Now, about her being a woman, well, a lot of people can be a woman, and you can be anyone if you can be a game changer. You can be fat, you can be skinny, you can be tall, you can be short. And about her being a Jew, well, she was a Jew, but let me tell you a little bit more about her. She had a cousin called Mordecai. And she was also an orphan. Okay, an orphan means that your mother and your father have died. And so that's not so happy. But anyway, she was an orphan, but she had her cousin Mordecai that loved her just like he was a father and she was the daughter. But about her, the third thing, about her saving her people, well, let me tell you how it all got started before I tell you about number three. One day, there was a feast for the king and the queen, and the king had his own feast, and he invited all the men of the kingdom to come to the feast, and the queen had a feast, and she invited all the women to come to the feast. And the king was like, my queen is so beautiful, I want all these men to see her. But when the queen heard that, she said no. And now, I would be really scared if I would have said no to the king because not a lot of people said no to the king and that wasn't really good. Not really people. Well, I can imagine that not a lot of people said no to the king. But she said no, and the king got furious. He said that if she didn't want to, I can imagine he said that if she didn't want to see his face right then, he would never want to see her face again. And so they had a worldwide search for another queen. And this is where our game changer comes in. 
Esther did it for her cousin Mordecai. She went to the king and she had to wait a couple of days before she was chosen. But by the grace of God, Esther was chosen to be queen. Amen. Amen. Now, about this Mordecai. Mordecai had a cousin. I mean, Mordecai had someone who did not like him that much. Like an enemy. Haman. This guy named Haman. He hated Mordecai. Because Haman was like the king's right hand man. And he wanted everyone to bow down to him. But Mordecai didn't bow down to him because he only bowed down to the God, the only God. And so that made Haman furious and he was mad. That's how Haman and Mordecai didn't like each other. But Haman thought and he was like, I need to get rid of Mordecai because he's just, I just don't like him. <laughs> and so he went to the king and he was like, there are some people. He, but Haman thought first, it wouldn't be just good to kill Mordecai. It would be good to kill all of the Jews because he knew that he was a Jew. So the kings, so Haman said, there were some people who really kind of have a problem with you. And the king was like, what should we do about these people? Haman said, kill them all. And he didn't even know that he was talking about the Jews. And he didn't even know that Esther was the Jew. But there was a law, and the king agreed that all of those people would be killed. Now, when Mordecai heard about this, he was kind of concerned about it. He put, he put on some sackcloth. He put on some ashes. I can imagine just Esther as a queen just looking out her window and seeing Mordecai dressed up in sackcloth and ashes. I can imagine she just said, what is going on with that man out there? <laughs> looking, like, looking like he homeless or something. <laughs> and so he sent, she sent word to him and he just did what he always did. Just Put on, he still had on his sackcloth, he still had on his ashes. And Mordecai was like, we all gonna be killed. And Esther was like, by who, who? Mordecai said, Haman, he, f he wants to kill all of the Jews. And she was a Jew and she would be killed too. Now, there are two ways that Esther could die in this situation. The first way is she could go to the king and tell him about this and try to change the law. And if you're not invited to the king, and he doesn't hold out his golden scepter, you will be sent to death. And the other way is, she can never tell him, and they can all die. But she did some serious thinking as a queen. She did some very serious thinking. And then she stopped thinking about herself and started thinking about her people and decided to go to the king. Amen. She went to the king and the king held out his golden scepter. Amen. And she was saved. And so, I, let me tell you a little something. I would be kind of scared to tell like the king your right-hand man is just like gonna kill us all. 
so I think you need to kill him first. <laughs> and so I would really flip trying to do that because that would be kind of hard for me. But she went to the king and she did it a different way. She said, I want to invite you to a banquet. And now, I wouldn't have done that that way, I would have just said, your right hand man is kind of like. Back to the story. <laughs> This was a very bad situation. But they went to the banquet. They had a good time. And you know, Haman, as this evil man, I bet he's like, hmm, I'm in the presence of the king and the queen alone. Now I'm just feeling happy. And he went home with an excite, excited spirit until he saw Mordecai. He wanted to get him done right then and there. So when he went home, he built some gallows to hang Mordecai on. To hang Mordecai on. But the king couldn't sleep that night, so the king wanted the records to be read to him. Now, I'm sorry, I am very sorry that I did not tell you about this, but Mordecai had overheard some guards trying to kill the king, some men that were trying to kill the king. He sent word to Esther, and Esther sent word to the king, and they were found guilty, and they were sent to death. And that was written in the history books. But the king never did anything for him. So when he had that read to him, he asked, what did we do for him? One of his servants must have said, nothing. And then Haman arrived. The king was like, I want you. There is just a man that I want to honor. And I bet Haman was thinking, oh, yeah, he's talking about me. <laughs> And now, Haman said, let him wear his royal robe. Let him be put on a horse and ride it throughout the city. And that horse be one of your royalist horse. And someone needs to ride him throughout the city, saying this is the man that the king wants to honor. And then, he said that. And the king was like, every last detail of what you said, do it for Mordecai. <laughs> and do you, now I would feel pretty up the top if I just went home, built some gallows for this person that I'm about to kill, and the king telling me to do all this good, fancy stuff for him. Haman was just furious. I could imagine he was about to blow his top. <laughs> Haman was mad, but he did it. He did every last detail of what he said to Mordecai. Then the banquet came, and Esther said, because the last time she asked, I want you to come to another banquet. And so they came to that banquet. And now she said, King, the real reason that I wanted you to come here in Haman is because there was a man who wants to kill all of the Jews. And I am a Jew. And the king was like, who would ever touch the queen? And she said, Haman. And Haman got in trouble. 
he was just pleading for Esther to save his life. And the king was like, what are you doing in front of the queen in my presence? <laughs> and, the, and the king said, throw him in, just send him to death. And the servants were like, he built some gallows for Mordecai to be hung on. The tables turned. Haman was hung on those gallows. Mordecai, Haman's house, Haman's position were all given to Mordecai. Now that was pretty awesome to me that something like that happened. And the Jews were saved by Esther, the girl who became queen. Now, have any of you noticed about Esther through that whole book? God was silent. Did you know that God could do marvelous things, wonderful things, without even saying one word? That's just awesome. And now I have a song that I would like to sing.
have a blessed day.